Hello, this is Dr. Lorenz, Longevity Health Institute, uh, December 2022. So what do anxiety, dementia, and aging have to do with each other and Taiwan? So um, that's what this talks about and uh, bring you a couple interesting things and facts and put those together. But what would those have to do with each other? Well, I could really make this really interesting and really complicated, but I'm gonna make it really simple. So you know what we do here if you follow me and if not, please subscribe. Um, and follow my channel here on YouTube and uh, uh, follow us and in, in, in that on Facebook. But uh, we are bringing you the best in functional personalized medicine and uh, really a personalized approach to really healthcare uh, and mostly advanced things. But what do these things have to do with each other? Well, as I always try to bring you updated things and here at the end of 2022, here I'm sitting in my office here in December 19th, 2022. Um, I'm going to share with you some new studies that just came out. Um, this you can see is here is in the New England Journal of Medicine Journal Watch. I actually just got this in December 15th, 2022. And I tend to read these a lot and do these little quick little reference. Uh, you know, Journal Watch is a review of multiple journals and things that are kind of current and modern. I tend to do these when I'm doing cardio at home in the morning, steady state stuff. Uh, in between my heavy, you know, kind of exercise and stuff that I like to do. But there's there's a few studies that tie this all together, okay? So one, one thing is that's just really, really, really um, kind of interesting and impressive that was actually published in the Journal of the Medical, American Medical Association, JAMA, in November of um, 2022. And that is the benefits of stress-reduced mindfulness and things that affect and calm down your nervous system versus the treatment of medications for anxiety. So, you know, this right here, this article right here, just right there, right on the top there, I put the pink dot by it, okay? Um, and how mindfulness, meditation for anxiety disorders are just as effective, if not even better than medications for anxiety. And that's what's really interesting about this is they did a study on anxiety related data points on scales of anxiety from one to seven. And they did a 24 week follow up. And there was more than a 4.5 reduction in patients that did um, stress reducing mindfulness, like cognitive behavioral therapy, which would be things like yoga and uh, meditation um, and intentive like breathing and again, cognitive feedback type of exercises versus a medication. Okay, so again, our world, tons of stress, tons of anxiety, tons of things to worry about here, you know, in our new kind of era post COVID. Um, a lot of changes economically, politically, etc. in the world, scary things. But remember this, it's not always solved by the medication. Now, I'm not anti-medication. And remember, I'm here to educate and inform and bring you with the best intention health decisions that you can make because our doors are always open and we're here to help. But I like to guide you in some things. And one of the things is, is that drugs are not always a solution. In fact, often they're band-aids that clog the system and create more side effects than anything, but they're also not all bad. In a, in a, in a case like this with anxiety, um, that kind of goes against, or kind of the other side of this kind of study is that when we test neurotransmitters here for people that have sig sig significant mood disorders and have um, anxiety and neurologic stuff and sleep issues and attention issues that are not being, um, uh, influenced upon with behavioral therapies and psych psychology and um, meditation and yoga and calming and working on the autonomic nervous system and lifestyle things, um, we'll do we'll actually do neurotransmitter testing and you could be very deficient in dopamine, norepinephrine, serotonin, things that actually make a huge influence into your mood regardless of what's going on in the world and regardless of what's going on in your life, okay? Um, and, but this is just a point that I love in a great journal, the Journal of the American Medical Association in November of 2022, that how you can get significant anxiety reduction better than a medication, okay, um, when you use this kind of therapy, this mindfulness kind of therapy, mindful, relaxing, calming the autonomic nervous system, deep breathing, talking to a therapist, meditation, yoga. So do it. If you're feeling any sort of anxiety, or um, anxiety or nervousness about the future or the present, 
maybe uh, take that into account. The other thing is that um, is kind of, uh, if you will, <clears throat> The other side of this is another study that just came out in the Journal of Neurology in October of, um, of 2022. And, and here the, um, the, the uh, publication again in this Journal Watch, but again, this was in the Journal of Neurology, the association between menopause, um, dementia, um, and, uh, and, and, and how hormone replacement and menopausal therapies affect dementia. Now, the interesting thing is, and I wanna point out to this, is that in most uh, accepted traditional past, um, even medical lay approaches with synthetic hormone replacement, it's believed that hormone replacement um, is not good for the heart and brain. And that in over five years of use, you can actually increase your risk of cardiovascular events and neuro neurologic events um, and outcomes. And that is, I believe, a very, very, very misinformed, a very um, uh, um, uh, sadly influenced opinion. That's just my opinion, again, to educate. And But actually this study, and this is why I wanna share this with you, is to the contrary of what we practice here. And, but I wanna show you even in this study, which was over 100,000 individuals, okay? There was some benefit of cognitive dementia, reduction in cardiovascular events, even in this bad study that I don't really kind of agree with and all that, when there was a cumulative length of dose um, used with uh, um, hormone replacement. So basically the study looked at um, 35,000 individuals with the use of hormone replacement, um, estrogen particularly, and they don't say whether it's uh, synthetic or bioidentical, which we only use here bioidenticals, and they don't say how it's, it, if it was balanced or unopposed, but where I think that it says a lot is this is a Taiwanese study, even though it's produced uh, or published uh, here in the Journal of Neurology in October of 2022, in America, it's a Taiwanese study of these 100,000 individuals and in a military hospital. Well, I can guarantee they don't have bioidentical hormones, okay, in these postmenopausal women. So 35,000 women got hormones, synthetic estrogen, and 70,000 did not receive um, hormone replacement. And what they noticed was, is that the dosing, the higher the dosing, there might be a risk. What they also noticed though, is the length of use had no association, and there was even a reduction in cardiovascular events. So the point here in this 10-year study in this follow-up, I don't really like it. It's a Taiwanese study. It's a military hospital. It's synthetic hormones. But what I want to point out here is even in this, where there's some kind of bad, if you will, publication about hormone replacement, it's not all really that bad, and it's nothing here that we do at Longevity Health Institute or in a personalized functional medical approach was, which is getting at a balanced, a optimization, but a personalized dose individually for you to be well and to be preventative. So I thought that was really key. Now, most people, just you know, in the world, if they go on hormone replacement, it's for vasomotor symptoms, it's for hot flashes. And we do that here, but there's so many benefits when you're talking about quality, balanced, natural hormone replacement, like better sleep, less inflammation, better mood, better sex, better energy, um, uh, gosh, better focus. I could go on and on and on. And I'm telling you here in our practice and in current studies in the US, yet smaller with bioidenticals, there is nothing but prevention from the cognitive, neurologic, and cardiovascular systems. So that is the dementia aspect in the study. Now, one more study that I, I love, though, is, is a, a study that came out of the Journal of Aging in October of 2022 and it looked at the association between mTOR and progesterone. Now, mTOR is a term used for mammalian target of rapamycin, which basically what they found out is if you block mTOR in the body, you stop aging, you stop the progression of aging. So in the prevention of aging and longevity from so many aspects like catabolism, which is like muscle wasting, muscle loss, bone loss, like men, uh, excuse me, like osteoporosis and stuff, sarcopenia, muscle loss. Actually, in men and in women, actually, when you get that effect, 
all studies show a higher mortality. So when we get older and we get more brittle and lose mass, good quality mass, actually our mortality rates go way up. Okay, in fact, actually age 72 on, um, actually the death rates really start to um, uh, rapidly increase and the actually average age of death being 77, actually 76 point something if you take men and women. But the point here is, is that that sarcopenia, that osteoporotic, that, that, that catabolism effect in the body with aging drastically goes from 72 to 77, okay? So things that prevent that though are many things. But one thing that blocks, and in a study in aging that was published, one thing that blocks mTOR, okay, and this catabolic effect is progesterone. And I love that for women because we use progesterone here across the board, even in somebody in their late 30s, when they're even modestly insufficient or deficient because it creates so many wellness effects, so many lifestyle benefits, so many things like sleep, hair structure, um, hair growth, uh, stability, um, mood, less anxiety, better libido, better sleep. Um, I, would, I actually say when we replace and balance um, a progesterone level in a younger premenopausal female, okay, we got a husband for life, okay? Excuse me, a husband patient for life is what I should have said. And the reason is because we made that family so happy because she doesn't want to choke her husband <laughs> anymore because of mood stuff when her progesterone is deficient. But also the lovely thing about it is it's blocking mTOR, which is anti-aging and actually doing nothing but helping you um, have longevity and wellness. So here's some new updates. Hopefully that makes sense um, about anxiety, dementia, and aging, and some new studies and benefits and some tips. Think about it. Again, we're here to educate you, inform you with great intention for wellness and prevention, solving your goals, looking at, I call it the 30,000 foot view of some systems to create wellness and uh, reverse disease and be nothing but proactive. Proactive, not reactive. So let's thrive, not just survive. Let's have a great 2023 coming up here. It's been a pleasure to take care of you in 2022. Me and my practitioners in our office, all 27 of us are happy to have you. Doors always open and have a great, wonderful holiday. This is Dr. Lorenz, be well.